This is problem E64B. And in this problem, the given information states that we had beginning inventory on March 4th of 100 units, and they were valued at 1590. So I worked that backwards and calculated a unit price of $15.90. Then on March 6th, the firm purchased 200 units for $3,600, and that works out to $18 a unit. And then their final purchase on March 10th was for 150 units for $3,000, and that's $20 per unit. So in total, we have available in inventory for sale 450 units, and that's comprised of the 100 we started out with and the 350 that we purchased on March 6th and March 10th. Additionally, on March 15th, we sold 180 units for $5,400, and that works out for an average unit price of $30. So let's take a look at FIFO, and we'll calculate cost of goods sold and ending inventory under the FIFO method. So FIFO, first in, first out. Let's take a look at cost of goods sold. So that's all the stuff that went out. So we sold 180 units, and we sold the first stuff that was in inventory first. So that means we must have sold out of this layer first. We sold 100 of those units that were in beginning inventory first. So 100 at the 1590, that's equal to $1,590. Okay, so we're not there yet. We need to pick up an additional 80 units, so we need to drop down a layer. So let's pull 80 units out of our March 6 purchases. So 80 units, and we've got a unit cost of $18. So that's $1,440. Okay, so we've fully accounted for 180 units, and that makes cost of goods sold. Let's see, what is it here? $3,030. Let's do the same thing for ending inventory. This is first in, first out. We took Costco from the top down. We worked our way down through the layers. So if we were selling the oldest stuff, the first stuff in, then what must be left is the newer stuff. So to calculate the cost of our ending inventory, we need to start at the bottom layers and start working our way up. What is ending inventory? We have a total inventory of 450, and we sold 180 of those. So that leaves, let's see, 270 in ending inventory. With that knowledge, let's take a look at our layers. So we've got 150 in the bottom layer, so let's grab that. And those were $20 units. We're going to grab all of them, so I'll just use the total of 3000 So that means we need to grab an additional, oh, what do we need here? 150, we need another 120 units. So we need another 120 units out of this layer. And that'll get us to our 270, right? 
Okay, so these are $18 units. So 120 times 18 is equal to 2160. So that means that ending inventory is going to be valued at, let's see, 60, 1, 5160. So those are the values that we have under FIFO. Let's take a look at the same set of numbers, only this time we're going to do last in, first out inventory tracking. Let's calculate cost of goods sold first. And again, nothing changed here. We still sold that same 180 units. But under last in, first out, we're going to assume that we sold the March 10th items first and then work our way up through the layers. So we'll work our way up through the list from the newest stuff to the oldest stuff. Okay, so let's go in and grab these 150 units that we bought on March 10th for 3,000. We still need an additional 30 units to get to our 180. So we're going to take those out of our March 6th layer. And those are $18 units. So 30 times 18 is 540. And we have fully accounted for the 180 units that we sold. So that makes cost of goods sold $3,540. Let's calculate ending inventory now. And remember when we did FIFO, we said that we had 270 units in ending inventory. Now if we were selling our older units, or I'm sorry, if we were selling our newer units first, that means that we have the older units still left in ending inventory. Those are still in the warehouse. So we're going to start at the top of the list to calculate what's left in the warehouse ending inventory. So we'll grab that the 100 units in that first layer and let's see those 100 units we paid 1594 so that's $1,590 and we need to get an additional 170 units. So there's enough in here to grab those. So 170 units, those are $18 units. So those are worth 170 times 18, that's $3,060. So let's see, we have fully accounted for Oops, the $270, 270 units, I should say, in ending inventory. Those are the physical units. And the dollar value of those under LIFO is going to be $4,650. That is ending inventory. This was cost of goods sold expense. And notice, if we add those two together, they should total up to that total inventory of 81.90, and they do. Now let's take a look at the weighted average method of tracking inventory. And this is pretty easy under the periodic method we need to calculate a weighted average unit cost. And the way we do that is we just take our total inventory of 8190 and divide that by the total number of units in inventory of 450. 
So if we do that, we wind up with an average unit cost of $18.20 per unit. So now it's pretty straightforward to calculate cost of goods sold and in ending inventory. So cost of goods sold is just going to be equal to the 180 units we sold times the $18.20 average unit cost. So if I multiply 180 times the 1820, I wind up with 3276. Doing the same thing for ending inventory, we still had 270 units left in ending inventory times our average unit cost of 1820 gives us 49.14. Okay, now again, let's do a check and make sure these two should equal that total that we have up above there. And they do. Just for comparative purposes, let's take a look at cost of goods sold and ending inventory under FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average. And we see under FIFO that cost of goods sold was $3,030. Ending inventory was calculated at $5,160. Under LIFO, we calculated cost of goods sold at $3,540 and ending inventory at 46.50. Weighted average, we wound up at 32.76, and ending inventory was 49.14. All of these add up to the 81.90. So we have just sliced and diced that 8190 three different ways. So take a look at what's going on here. This firm is paying a higher price every time they buy something. So that's an inflationary environment. So we can say that in an inflationary environment, FIFO is going to yield us the lowest amount of cost of goods sold. And that's going to translate into a higher net income, isn't it? Because we're subtracting less from our sales revenue. Okay, in an inflationary environment, LIFO will give us a greater cost of goods sold and therefore less net income because we're subtracting a greater amount of expenses from revenue. Okay, weighted average splits the difference. Okay, that just takes an average. Now, if we saw this trend reversing, say we paid 20 and then 18 and then 1590, that's a period of deflation and we would see these relationships flip-flop. So in that case, FIFO would give us the greatest amount of cost of goods sold and the lesser amount of net income. LIFO would give us a lesser amount of cost of goods sold and a greater net income. And again, weighted average would be somewhere in between. That's gonna split the difference.